This video is entitled Part 2 Posts Vid, and it is required that you view this video before completing posts 9 through 14 in Part 2. As you can see by the title, we are again looking at the J. Boffin uh, file that was presented earlier in an assignment, but we're going to be taking a little closer look at some of the information we have, uh, specifically the information found in our tracks window, which is in view now. Let's look at the instruments. We have a variety of instruments displayed here. The band in a box label for the track is in blue. The actual instrument name is below. This is the MIDI patch number followed by the instrument name, acoustic bass, drums, acoustic grand piano, acoustic guitar and nylon and tenor saxophone, so we know specifically what instruments are being played. We also see over here some dots and dashes that represent MIDI data, and we see this type of uh, information in one, two, three, four, five tracks. So even though we have more labeled tracks over here, not all are used and not all are active. We can tell the active tracks by the presence of this MIDI data. Also, if I play, you'll notice some activity here, some metering. And if we look, one, two, three, four, again, five tracks that show activity. Notice that these active tracks also have a designation of a green check mark. In truth, the red X really means mute. The green check mark means unmute or active. I can click on an active track and notice the tenor saxophone is no longer audible. The MIDI data wasn't erased, it's just not being transmitted. The track is, in effect, muted. And now it's unmuted. And although we are dealing exclusively with MIDI data in this particular file, we still have an audio track indicated. Here we have some icons that indicate specific instruments. And again, these are related to, to the import of a band in a box file. But we also have an audio track indicated by these wavy parallel lines. And this, which is a, an icon of a five-pin DIN connector, is an icon used for MIDI. And we can also tell that just by the description. It says generic audio, uh, labeling it as an audio track, versus the use of MIDI out, um, identifying this type of track as a MIDI track. So it's important to be able to look at a glance at your tracks and to be able to distinguish MIDI data from audio data. Let's go up here and take a closer look at this area, because this is some important information as well. This indicates a key signature, which currently is C in this particular uh, song. Uh, by double-clicking, we can reset that through use of a drop-down menu and transpose the MIDI data if we want to. Uh, we can also uh, reset our tempo. The current tempo is 170, but we can increment and decrement one at a time, or you can actually use this and tap, and after four taps it will determine the tap tempo and generate the appropriate tempo marking here. And then we have the meter signature uh, which is displayed here. That information will become uh, a little more valuable to us a bit later. And over here we have the indication of the start of a song chorus and the end. So this is telling us this song is 48 measures long. Begins on beat 1, ends on bar 48. And last of all, in this file, I want to call your attention to our counter.
Now the counter is showing us not current song location just in ticks, but in the three columns of measure beat and tick. And this uh, is coordinated with the wiper that we have here. So we see now that the wiper is uh, partway through measure 9. It's in the second uh, uh, beat of measure 9. Measure 9, beat 2, and then 88 ticks. And we'll get into the significance of ticks later on in the class. But just understand the coordination between uh, the wiper and our counter. Two other counters are used to designate specific from and through or ending locations for the purposes of editing. Last of all, I'd like to reset this now. And now we have a blank uh, attract window. And it looks like by default we have all MIDI data uh, here is indicated by the 5-pin TIN connector icon. We have no information, so our tracks are muted. Uh, do notice, however, uh, some changes here. The key remained the same, but the default tempo is now 120. By double-clicking New, we establish a set of defaults. Um, the counters are all displaying prior to a first beat. There's a two two bar offset for a count off. And if you recall, we had a 48 bar song in J Boppin, and our default now is 32. So it's important to know these starting points within a new sequence. That we have a, a default key of C, default meter of 4 4, uh, default tempo of 120, and a default uh, song length of 32 bars. And that covers all the material that I wanted to uh, introduce through posts 9 through 14 in part 2.